Hey folks, Dust here, and I wanted to discuss another roster move taking place here at the beginning of the year, and it is Rogue adding Nico, as his team has been in search of a fifth after the departure of Ricky. They had Tinsky standing in for a short time, but it was never really certain if he would become a full-time member, and we have learned that he is not going to be, and said they have added Nico, who had most recently been playing with Optic, and of course had been dropped from that team when they brought in Refresh. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Rogue, talk a little bit about Nico, and then talk about this move in general and what it can mean for Rogue's outlook going forward, as of course they won't be a part of the major, they weren't even a part of the minor, but they have some seasons of pro leagues coming up, and they had just recently, with Tinsky standing in, qualified for that next star ladder land that's coming up, so that is probably going to be kind of their offline debut. But to hit on Rogue a little bit, I mean, I don't want to go too far back. I'll go as far back as DreamHack Austin earlier this year, which is essentially the debut of Ricky. They had already had Kadian on board. They had players like Sick Vice and Hiko. And this event for them was actually massive. They actually made the finals of this event. They beat Optic and Space Soldiers in the opening best of ones. They played against Fragsters, that up-and-coming Danish team that had guys like Refresh and Stound and, and all those guys, and beat them. And then they went on to play Space Soldiers in the finals, and they had a really close series here, almost won the whole tournament. And this seemed like this might be a sign that this rogue team could be a legit middle-of-the-pack North American team, could maybe be a threat for some of the playoff slots for ECS and EPL. And then maybe they could qualify for some other DreamHack Open type events, some other Tier 2 events, and try to work their way up. I mean, they had Kaden, who was like a really stable opper and in-game leader. They had Ricky, who was coming in as a hybrid player and was playing pretty well. And they had guys like Sick and Vice, who were guys in the NA scene that, you know, at times had shown some promise, particularly a guy like Sick when he was in TSM and even at times in Misfits. And then you had Hiko, kind of just the veteran on the team that didn't really have to be a star player. He could just kind of play a role and just be a part of the team and maybe be that other kind of leader on the team next to the IGL. And this was a pretty solid little debut for them after a lot of chaos prior to this where they were qualifying for much of anything. The Rogue has had a really rough history ever since kind of joining the North American scene with just roster issues and stuff like that. So this team finally seemed stable and they actually did something. But after that, you know, they did qualify for the America's Minor as well, which is pretty huge. You know, despite the fact they had had some troubles and some other online qualifiers, getting to the Minor was the, the big thing. And they did well at this monitor. They beat EU United and they beat Complexity when it mattered most to actually get the spot. They ultimately lost to Complexity in the finals of the minor, but they had done their job. They made it to the major. But at the major, they didn't really advance very much, but they still looked somewhat impressive. I mean, people remember they beat Space Soldiers in the opening game. They had a really close loss to Astralis on Inferno. They almost pulled off the upset against Astralis. That would have been crazy. They then did have a really disappointing loss against Spirit, but then they came back and played North and went into three overtimes, ultimately lost that game, though. But again, they looked pretty sharp, and, you know, Rogue weren't really expected to do much at this major, to be 100% honest, especially considering some of the opposition they faced, like an Astralis, like a North. I mean, yeah, maybe you could have hoped they could beat Spirit after what you saw against Astralis from them, but yeah, ultimately you know, get knocked out here. And this is where things get rough for Rogue because obviously Cadian's going over to North. They had Crystal filling in for a short time until later, of course, getting MSL. But while Crystal was standing in, I mean, wound up getting into a position where they're facing relegation in EPL. In ECS, they keep their spot in the league. And I guess they were maybe a few games away from being a playoff threat, but really just kind of more of a middle of the pack team. Kind of where you expected them to be, to be 100% honest. But then they do eventually get uh, Uber to stand in for them again in an EPL relegation. And they actually do wind up being able to avoid relegation. So, you know, got to tip your hat to them for at least being able to go ahead and stay within the professional league. That's whenever they were using, they were beating teams like Singularity and stuff like that. And then, you know, they have MSL on board now. And they weren't able to qualify for DreamHack Winter. A little bit disappointing. They lost to Bravado in a best of three for that spot. But they did go on and play in DreamHack Atlanta, where they had some decent games, right? I mean, they don't make it out of the groups, but they were able to beat Fragsters in the opening best of one, who, to be fair, were using a stand-in. They then had a really close game against Ghost, a team that was looking really sharp in North American scene. And then they had a 0-2 series of Vitality, the eventual winners of the tournament. Now, after all this, you know, this is where it becomes kind of apparent that Ricky is no longer going to be a part of the team. You know, he had certainly played with them at this Atlanta event, 
But then, you know, he apparently went back to Australia to do something with his visa. And then you think, oh, okay, so, I mean, that just has to happen, understandable. So they have to get a stand-in. They're using Tinsky. But then there was this weird thing where Ricky actually made it back to Vegas, from what I understand. But they still weren't using him. They were using Tinsky. And I think what was publicly said on social media at the time was that, oh, the team had been practicing with Tinsky, so they didn't want to make a change in the middle of, you know, trying to qualify for the America's Minor for IM Kedavita 2019, as well as they were competing in that Star Lab season seven i league qualifier as well but now looking at it in hindsight you can kind of tell that ricky was on his way to complexity and this is what created the gap that eventually nico comes in to fill as tinsky was just a stand-in and maybe even trialing to be a full-time member but that doesn't work out now i'm not sure that's because ricky was kicked or if because ricky decided to lead the joint complexity i don't know what the actual story is there I, at the time, thought it kind of stunk that Rogue was letting Ricky go because outside of, you know, when Kanan was on the team, Ricky was one of their other really good fraggers. I mean, he was a good secondary opping threat. He was a good aggressive rifler. So I thought losing him was actually kind of a big stab to the team. It's no offense to Tinsky. I think Tinsky can be a good supportive type player, but they didn't really need that. They needed kind of more big firepower. And, and so when Ricky stepped away, I thought this was really going to hurt. And it did. I mean, they didn't qualify for the minor. They wound up losing to Envy and Team 1, so they don't make it to the minor. However, I guess the small silver lining was that Rogue was able to qualify for Starlighter Season 7, beating out teams like United, Furia, and Envy along the way in best of three to do so. And then after that is where we're left with Nico now coming in for Tinsky and what this can mean for the team. So just to briefly kind of walk you through Nico, again, this is, of course, the Danish Nico, not the Nico from FaZe or the old Danish Nico that's spelled it N-I-C-O. This is Nikolai. He was actually referred to for a little while there, which I kind of always hoped he would just stick with that name. But for whatever reason, he didn't. I think that would have been a cool differentiator between him and the other Nikos in the scene to kind of let him stand out a little bit. But to each their own, he decided to stay with Nico. Now, this Nico, if you don't know much about him, I'm sure you've seen his name around before. He started out in the Danish team playing in smaller teams, basically starting at the very end of 2015. And he was playing with teams like, I think one was called Alpha and, and a couple of other smaller Danish teams. And he's basically playing at smaller competition like a Vex, the old Polish Vex and LDLC Blue, Alternate Attacks, the old Polish CSGO Lounge team, Torpedo, which was kind of a team of somewhat lesser known Swedish players mostly, and then playing against other Danish teams. And he was actually playing really well online against these teams, putting up really good numbers. And this actually lands him on Tricked, where he was playing alongside guys like Hunden and Yugi. And he played pretty well for this team as well. I think maybe what caught some other people's attention was, I believe he played against Dignitas in like this League of Sharks land. And they, you know, didn't really get the wins, but he individually played quite well against the Dignitas team. This is, of course, the Dignitas that had a guy like MSL in game leading. I, think, I believe Config was still on the team at the time. Magus was on this team. And then I think it was like Cajun B and Rabino, if I'm not mistaken. He individually played pretty well against them in this land in this best of three series they played. And this eventually got him a shot with Heroic because Glaive departed Heroic to join Astralis. So we all know the story there. And this opened up a gap. And so he was playing alongside Snappy, Madi, Valda, and originally Freeze, but pretty soon afterwards Freeze was replaced by Yugi. And then he stayed on Heroic for a long time, actually. I mean, he saw, you know, Freeze leave for Yugi. He saw Valda leave to go to North. And then that's when Esotag got picked up. Then there was the whole chaos situation with Rabino. And then guys like Freiburg and Kroman come in. Asilian comes in for Croman, and he was with this team really until late 2018. I mean, he served on this team for basic for almost two years, essentially, because he joined late 2016. And during his time with Heroic, you know, early on, they had that top four finish at Northern Arena Montreal. That was actually his first time traveling internationally, if I'm not mistaken, or at least traveling outside of Europe. And they, you know, had some wins in groups over G2 and Liquid and then lose to Optic, the eventual champions. This is, of course, the Optic team that won this event and then won E-League Season 2 and, and kind of one of those big name North American lineups in history. And then he essentially played at a bunch of smaller events, like a bunch of different DreamHack Open events throughout, you know, 2017 with Heroic. And they usually were able to at least get top four. I think they did have maybe a second place finish here and there. But mostly just kind of were within the tier two. Didn't really do anything within, you know, big tier one tournaments. A couple of exceptions to this. I mean, there was that whole top four finish at IM Katowice in 2017, where he did have some pretty good maps individually against teams like North and Navi. But I think they played against Astralis in the best of three. And, and it had a pretty close 0-2 series there. He didn't play that well individually in that series. But that was like one of the tier one events Heroic made noise at. 
And then much later on at the very end of 2017 is when, of course, they had that upset over the Brazilian SK team. And that's how they got a top eight finish at that event. And he actually played pretty well in that SK series and played pretty well individually throughout the D-League Premier event. But then, of course, everyone will remember that there was this trade that took place, right, where Mertz from North got traded over to Heroic, and then Nico kind of joins North temporarily while they're kind of sorting out their roster. And his debut for North is actually that DreamHack Master Stockholm event where they tear it up and win the tournament in super surprising fashion. I mean, they're beating Navi, they're beating Mouse Sports, they beat Astralis in the finals in a best of three. They had beaten Astralis earlier in the tournament in a best of three as well. One of the only teams, actually, that I think it's the only lineup that has a head-to-head -head advantage over Astralis. Of course, this is a very special case because it was only basically one event that they played against Astralis with this lineup. But it's just kind of a little fun fact alongside MSL being an MVP with an op, some weird alternate reality we were in at that event. He didn't have the biggest numbers at this event, but I feel like this is kind of what planted the seed in MSL's head on how Nico could be used and how he could be effective. You know, Nico was basically playing an entry fragger role for North at this event. And really, if we're honest, throughout his entire career with Heroic, he was pretty much an entry fragger. He was kind of the guy paired up with Snappy as kind of the entry duo where guys like Madi and Valdo were kind of playing the edges of the map, you know, playing the solo roles. And of course, Yugi was, you know, the primary AWP. So his role has always been much of a entry or secondary entry, more of an aggressive rifler, a guy used in the main map control group, a guy used to find entries. And I think MSL kind of saw that and used him in that role at the Streamhack Master Stockholm event. Now they go to the face at major. They obviously don't do really well there, you know, losing that best of three the vega squadron denying them a chance to go deep in that tournament and with that north obviously went through changes bringing in guys like katie and gade and with that since gade was leaving optic nico plays for a short time over at optic now this team obviously in shambles not really doing a whole lot but he did manage to help this team avoid relegation in epl and he at least helped them kind of play second at that cs summit three event so some of their better results actually were when nico was on the team and he was eventually dropped, though, when they brought in Refresh. Now, I don't think Nico was actually implemented very well on Optic. He wasn't really used in that entry fragger role because they had guys like Snappy who were going to pair up with Config to kind of do that type of thing. So I feel like he kind of didn't really get the best opportunity on Optic on, on how he was used and how people saw him. But he still played pretty well individually, despite the fact that he wasn't really in the roles he would normally play or that he played most of his career. And... Yeah, showed a little bit of flexibility and, and still showed a little bit of value. Now, look, I'm not saying that Nico is some superstar level player, a guy who's going to put up monster numbers on a consistent basis, but I think he proved that he can be effective. He has had big games in the past against big teams. When he was in a stable environment early on with Heroic, he did show quite a lot of promise. And you have to remember that he essentially had no international land experience until the very end of 2016. So he's really only been on the circuit for a couple of years now. And he is now going to be joining Rogue, obviously, kind of sinking back up with MSL, a guy who had played with a very, very short time on North. And look, no matter what you think about MSL as an in-game leader, he has proven that he is very good at bringing up young riflers, particularly in an entry-fragging role. I mean, Config and Kierby are the two biggest examples of this, kind of bringing them up through teams like Dignitas and North. So... I think that this is a great environment for Nico to work with MSL again. I think MSL can probably get a lot out of Nico. Again, he has a good track record with young entry fragging riflers. And also for rogue standards, given everything I kind of talked about earlier, picking up Nico is actually a pretty damn good pickup. I mean, he already picked up a, a good in-game leader in MSL, and now you've brought in a really strong rifler. I mean, you pair up Nico with Sick all of a sudden that's actually a pretty nasty little entry duo if they decide to go that route. I mean, I know MSL kind of historically liked to pair up with his entry fragger and liked to be the guy to set him up. That's how he was able to bring up guys like Config and Kierby. But obviously right now MSL is in this primary opping mindset, which I guess for now they don't really have another person to come and do that. But it seems like a choice where they maybe could have tried to bring in a primary opper, but MSL wants to keep doing it. I think he can do it to some degree, but he's never going to be a star level player. I mean, everyone's going to say, but wait, he got the MVP at Stockholm. Yeah, come on, that's an outlier. But I mean, I think at least he can kind of serve the role a little bit, almost kind of like what Nitro is doing on Liquid, though I don't think MSL is as strong of an individual player as Nitro, obviously. So I don't know how that's going to play out long term. But I do think that Nico is going to add some firepower to this team. I think he could be 
maybe even a better version of what Ricky was for this team when he was playing on the team. I think that that's probably a fair assumption. I think that these moves that Rogue are making are actually kind of causing me to think that, hey, maybe this team could actually be dangerous within the North American region. Maybe they could challenge for that last spot you know, in, in EPL for playoffs, kind of that sixth spot or something like that. Maybe they could try to challenge a little bit and make some DreamHack open events or something like that. That They could at least crack into some of these tier two events and maybe get some results here and there just with the in-game leading of MSL, the fact that Nico can bring the firepower, the fact that you have guys like Sick and Vice who can be pretty good. This does add to Rogue. I think this is a good move for Rogue for sure. For Nico, it is a bit of a step down, just like for MSL is a bit of a step down, but maybe... You know, if you get enough people on this team, maybe you can really build something for the future within the region. I do think that Rogue are probably one more roster move away from truly being dangerous. Because, I mean, look, in the North American region, you have Team Liquid, you have Made in Brazil, you have Energy, you have Cloud9 kind of coming back a little bit. You have Ghost sitting up there as well. I mean, these teams, I think, are pretty firmly on top of the region. But you've had some teams kind of falling apart, like United's kind of falling apart. Luminosity's had their issues. So there's some teams kind of falling out. Even Complexity is going through some really tough changes right now. It didn't really look good at I by Power Masters or, or look good at E-League. And I'm not really sure what they're going to do after the Major. So when you're looking at the pecking order, when Rogue's making moves like this, they're kind of sneaking their way up to maybe a top six spot in the region. Certainly, that would put you in playoff threat contention in a league like the EPL. So depending on what complexity does to get their act together, depending on what E United and Luminosity do to get their acts together, you know, this team is kind of quietly making their moves to kind of establish themselves a little bit. Obviously, if Cole makes the right moves, they could come back and, and, and threaten that position. They do have some good foundational pieces in the Stannis, Lawn, and Shazam in particular. So if they can get a little bit of star power, I think that they could, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rogue, for instance. But, yeah, I think, you know, this is a good move for all parties. Again, I think if Rogue made one more really good roster, I think they could actually be really, really dangerous within the region. But for right now, this is still pretty good considering the instability elsewhere across the board. So, yeah, I just want to talk about this move a little bit. Hope you folks enjoyed it. If you did, please follow subscribe for more content. Catch you next time.